question is, like, do people want to come and drink a beer and look at goats? Like, of course, I thought that sounded cool, but would everybody else think that was a crazy idea? I said, I'm, I'm willing to do it, but I just want to make sure she understood that, you know, farms are different places. I'm Joy. And I'm Tim. And you're at Turning Page Farm Brewery in Monson, Maine. She's in charge of the cheese and the goats. I'm in charge of the beer. So who do I have in here? I yeah. have sugar and nutmeg and cinnamon and tyragon and cayenne. Okay. And then the two new ones I bought in are coriander and star anise. So we're building up the spice yes, rack. We are. I like it's that. It's all about the spice rack. The stereotype is they'll eat anything. But I find that they're really particular. So I always say like they'll lick anything, like they're interested in everything, but they're really very picky about what they eat. I have a rare breed called Guernsey goat, and they have a very high butterfat content. So Ooh. they're really good with yields nice for cheese rich. making. They are, Oh, you're yeah. so sweet. <laughs> wow, I feel like he's looking into my soul. I have seven girls that I'm hand milking twice a day. And now, of course, this time of year, we have the little kids out, and so I'm bottle feeding the kids as well. It's just my sacred time in the barn. You know, it's quiet time, it's peaceful. So she does the goats, but I'll go out and feed the chickens, and I'll feed the pigs, and get the ducks and everybody out. After chores, for me, it's the making. So whether I'm making my goat cheese salad dressings, or I'm making cheese, or I'm making goat milk soaps. Then I just, the first thing I look at is, what do I need to do for the brewery? Because obviously, this is our A number one. The initial thought, was that we would do the goat dairy and the creamery and make this the core business. As amazing as her cheeses are, it's on the scale that we're doing it, it's probably not the anchor that we needed. What we realized is that enterprises are key. And the better and, and or more varied enterprises you have, the more successful you can be. I'd been brewing beer for about 10 years. We decided, okay, we're just gonna take the brewery to a pro level and I sort of did it quietly and without much, you know, fanfare. Our tagline is small town, small batch. We live in a town of less than 700 people. It does drive kind of our business decisions. It's easy to kind of chase the numbers and to always go bigger and increase the brewery. We are extremely small. We do one barrel batches, that's 31 gallons. The amount of beer that we start to flow in the summertime, that becomes a challenge. We only have enough beer to sell here on the farm. I sell my cheeses within a 10 mile radius, but those decisions that we made like help with the quality of our life, help with the quality of our product. And it is also what differentiates us too. What I don't want to do and quite frankly can't afford the time to do is to brew every single day because we it is just the two of us that does this. Building, all of the all of the groundwork, everything is all on us to do. We're right halfway in the middle of a solar project. It's going to be a 13 kilowatt grid tied system. And there's a shed that I built right behind us. That's shed number one. And then there will be a sister to that, a second one exactly like it out in our back pasture. We will offset as much of the power that we use through power that we can generate. What we love best about what we do here that some of the bigger breweries can't do, right? They have a lot of waste with their spent grains or the creamery with their whey. So we're able to use the whey and our spent grains that feed our pigs. And at the end of the season, we also use our pigs to clear out forests. So we're clearing out more and more land and we're just doing that naturally with the pigs who are, have their noses and snouts uh, in the ground all day long, um, picking up special snacks. And at the end of the season, we sell 50 pound pork boxes to our customers and we put pork in our own freezers. So what in some cases is waste for us is input. Instead of just venting the hot air that greenhouses always capture, just outside, we're gonna recapture that heat and stuff it down into the ground. And so underneath us are some 700 linear feet of basically air channel. The heat is pushing down into the ground and is actually warming up the ground. So it's a little less wood that we have to burn. It's a little less electricity that we have to use to heat this space. In the winter time, if we've had days that are zero degrees Fahrenheit um, and the sun is shining like it is today and it's 68 to 72 degrees in here with no heat going. I'll admit for the first two seasons of this, Mainers were usually the only ones that would enjoy it in here in the winter because <laughs> Mainers are tough, they're and, tough. and they're like, beer, drink beer in the cold, no problem. 
So this is the brewery. This is, are you ready for the big tour? Do I'm ready, no, yes. It's really small. <laughs> we basically do all the brewing in these two kettles and these three on the right here are actually unit tanks. So I can ferment and bright and condition all in one tank. And when it's finished, I can carbonate and, and let it mature a little bit and then bring it right from here into kegs to be served. And I have another vessel that's in the walk-in cooler that I use for brighting and carbonating. I've got, uh, I've got a, a new wheat beer that I'm trying in this vessel here. Mm that will be rolling out. Uh, I think the name she chose, I don't, Weather Vane Wheat. Beautiful, does so, Joy make the names up? Yeah. Ah, oh, she, yeah. that's so cool. She's, she's better at that than she I. She also names the goats. And names yeah. the goats. So what will we be drinking today? Will we, will we have all of this except for the wheat beer? Exactly, the wheat is brand new. That'll be ready in a couple weeks. And then we've got some red, which is our, that's our flagship beer, our, red, our farmhouse red ale, which is a Scottish ale, which we're probably gonna run out of today at the beer garden. We might have to get in line early. Exactly. Our black slate stout is a classic Irish style stout in the vein of like a Beamish or a Guinness. We've got our Beehive Brown, which is a British Miles type of beer. It's a very light alcohol, 3.2%. And I'm actually most proud of that beer because it's super dark and it almost scares people who don't like dark beers. But then when I give them a taste, they say, oh, that's 180 from what I thought it was mm. gonna taste like. Um, and then the last beer is the Pale that's actually right behind you. Um, that is an American style pale ale in the vein of, of the new sort of craft brewish. So it's got a lot more hoppiness, a lot more bitterness to it. Um, this is really my big nod to craft brewery as it stands as a scene in America now. Mm -hmm. And this one, I think I'll be filling it with a new rye beer that I'm gonna try. Ooh. Yeah, this will be a brand new beer. A lot of breweries like literally have pilot systems, test systems that are bigger than this. Um, but this is my system. And it's like, if it's a test batch, it's all in. Right. So I just do it and hope that I never make a batch that is that is awful. It's very difficult to make the same beer precisely over and over and over. And But the longer I brew this beer, the closer each batch gets. If I live down the street and, you know, I come here every weekend, maybe I like that there's going to be some variation. It's like, oh, Tim was doing this this week and I can taste it, you know? That's, is that something? It is. It, it cuts both ways. Yeah. Because you have customers that, you know, it, and if through no fault of their own, they come to expect my beer especially the ones that I always have on tap, like the red, to taste a certain way. So if things change a little bit, they, they do notice. But that's kind of the terroir of it. A right? little bit. I want variation. I want something unique. And like you said, if each visit is unique, then more's the better. Right. A lot of the breweries in Maine, especially once you get outside of Portland, breweries tend to look a lot more rural. They tend to be a lot more in people's almost residential space. You know, our house is right over there. I call it rural uh, craft beer scene up here. So the brewmaster becomes the pastor or, you know, the community connector sometimes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I volunteer in the fire department and we bought a new truck last year. So we hosted a fundraiser party for the fire department. So we brought the truck that their tax dollars paid for. Oh. They got to touch it, sit in it, play with the buttons. And it was really cool. We do a Veterans Day thing. And we just try to do a lot of things like that to sort of give back. So you live down the street. Correct. About how close? About 1,500 feet, oh. roughly. <laughs> <laughs> a little convenient. under a mile. Okay, okay. And how long have you been there? Uh, about 10 years. I originally came from down in Salco. My heart and soul was always up here. Every school vacation I was up here. I'm currently reclaiming my farm fields okay. down the road. Uh, I plan on getting some Highlander cows and nice. uh, get back into some chickens and, yeah. and the whole gardening thing. And I come over here, help Tim on some of his small projects. Tim comes over and helps me out on some of my yeah. small projects. You know, you need a few extra hands. Back a few years ago there, uh, they had a structure fire here at the barn. I chased Tim into the house there to oh get, get the dog. Uh, we were able to save the house. Uh, the barn was already too far gone. It was probably, I don't know, six, seven months afterwards there, right? I asked him if he wanted to join. Uh, he said, absolutely. So I got him an application there, and uh, the next fire meeting we had there, we voted upon hiring him. Uh, and he's been great 
ever since. He's great with uh, patients, families there, you know. But we could have something, uh, you know, critical going on there. And, you know, and of course, it's an upsetting time for family members there, you know, with witnessing what's going on. And he can take the situation from 100 miles per hour right down to a nice, calm, easy going and relaxed state, which is great. Yeah. Absolutely great. I mean, for the past 20 years, having corporate jobs, we were climbing the corporate ladder and spending almost all of our time on airplanes. And the higher we would go and the more successful we would get, like, the more miserable we became. And you would look at the people above you and they were more miserable than you were. We realized as we would do various projects in the, in the corporate life that you'd spend a lot of time and energy and hustle getting done. And then to watch random people above you just take that away. But just say, oh, that's not our focus this week or this month or this year. We're gonna go do something else. And I just, it felt like to me, like the carrot at the end of the stick was just like shriveling up, right? It was not even worth the reward. What we liked about this lifestyle and this business is that all of the decisions we make all the projects that we plan and follow through are our own. We own them. So this is us turning a page in the new chapter of our lives, like doing something totally different, getting off that, that wheel and just taking control of our lives and being in control of our schedules and our days and how we want to live. We don't feel empty at the end of the day having done some project and then never really seeing you know, the fruits of those labors. And we can look around here and we see shelves that are full of goat's milk cheese. We see fences that are done. We see, you know, structures that are built. And there's so much more satisfaction to that than anything. Any of the money we ever made, any of the, the things we've experienced, to be honest with you. We think you should do work that stirs your soul. We think you should have fresh local ingredients and we want to strengthen community as well. Up here, you know, it's all about community. We're so far from everything. Then the geographically, we're so distant and the, the sparse population People need places to, to, to hang out. Everybody's looking out for each other. Everybody's out here uh, to give each other a hand. Uh, if you need it, you got it, and it's great. The feedback has been overwhelming. People do want to drink beer and look at goats, yeah. for sure. <laughs>